Okay, so now we're going to talk about problems with the rainbow color ramp. And this is definitely one of my favorite things to pick on. So when we're choosing colors for our maps and charts, it isn't a subjective exercise like picking out kitchen towels. And we don't just pick colors on our graphs because they look good or we like them and we definitely don't accept software defaults, right? Okay, you may have in the past, but hopefully you won't anymore, right? So there are important rules we can follow to make color schemes work for us and make sure colors are representing our data correctly. We also need to be aware of perceptual constraints like red, green, color blindness. The goal is to design with all these issues in mind and not merely rely on defaults or by picking what we think looks good. That's the good news is there are rules for us. So let's start by looking at the uh, visible spectrum. The rainbow color ramp is based on the order of colors in the visible light spectrum. So remember, our eyes have cones with three different types of photoreceptors. Some cones detect red wavelengths, some detect green wavelengths, and some of our cones detect blue wavelengths. The other colors are created by our brain and the detection of multiple wavelengths. So for example, if green and red waves are being reflected and received by our receptors, our brain mixes them together and quote unquote sees yellow. Okay, so the first fundamental problem with the rainbow color ramp is that the order between the colors isn't intuitive. You don't perceptually see it as ordered. You do know that they're connected. We know that this is sort of a color wheel and it wraps around and blue will transition to purple, transitions to red when there's enough classes. But if we reduce the number of classes, we lose that intuition. We lose that the, the, um, the connectivity, we can't rank them. That's the bigger problem. So if I give you the colors red, green, and blue, you can't know what orders to put them in. You can't know that red represents a higher number than blue, right? Okay, so another issue or limitation of the rainbow color ramp is um, that we have different hues, but we also have um, different shades of hues or different lightnesses of the hues. So it's called luminance. Notice how the yellow, if we desaturate this color scheme, the yellow shows up as light gray right in the middle of the ramp. And we've got the purple and dark red showing up as dark gray. This creates a lack of perceptual ordering. We're going from low to high in values, but we're going um, dark, 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 and then lightening up again, and then going back dark. And that makes no sense. So you can test for luminance by converting your color, ramp, your color ramps to grayscale or um, desaturating them. Again, this is called luminance. Okay, so here's another example just kind of showing it spread out, linear. Um, it's important to know that people tend to see dark colors as deeper or lower and light colors as higher. So light colors are typically read as peaks or high places. And that's why topography is most logical and easiest to read when light colors represent high elevations. Use dark colors to represent low elevations. The problem with the rainbow color scale is that the luminance breaks up the natural sequential nature of the color scheme. It introduces these false or distracting accents into what should otherwise be continuous data. So, you know, if this was a roller coaster, we'd be going, whoa, whoa, and then way down and then back up. But our values should be going from, you know, zero to one. So it really just um, works against us in too many ways. Yellow and teal have the highest luminance and will often appear to represent peaks, even though they're, you know, kind of in the middle of the scale. Okay, the third major downfall of the rainbow color ramp is the unequal representation of continuous data. So you can see that the, the rainbow color ramp is sort of dominated by the color green. There's a lot of blue, but yellow is very brief. There isn't the same proportion of color equally spread across the ramp. It's not a one-to-one -one representation. So if you're dealing with continuous data or just a range of values, they're not being represented equally. Looking left to right and back again, certain colors seem to run on while others are very short-lived. 
So the incremental change in mapped color hue doesn't translate to the same incremental change in numeric value. So that's a problem. There's going to be misrepresentation of data. Okay, the fourth issue to take with the rainbow color scheme is that humans don't perceive differences in all hues equally well. So this adds to the problem of the fact that we don't have um, equal proportions of the colors in the ramp. We also don't see them equally. So these on top are kind of the classic color ramps. This is a like a, it's called magma sometimes, or it's a heat, kind of an intense heat ramp, and this is the rainbow color scale, where we can see that there are these false features in both luminance and false features in the dominance or um, over proportion of some of the colors. The color ramps on the bottom were adjusted to make them perceptually uniform, meaning we should see equal amounts of green and yellow and orange and red and pink They've been adjusted. That's, these are called perceptually graded color schemes. Notice too that the luminance is uh, much more balanced. We don't have that striking peak in the yellow and the teal. It's been balanced out. Here we're definitely going from a light to a dark and we've maintained that, but we've gotten rid of this weird peak in the yellow and the peak in the red and the dominance of the red it has been muted a little bit. Okay, here's another uh, quick example. This strip of colors um, here, the, the rectangles in this uh, segment is how we see the rainbow color ramp. The colors change from green to blue, but you can see there's a lot more diversity between the blues than there is in the green. The greens look almost identical, but the rectangles have evenly spaced hue values. The steps between the colors are mathematically consistent, but obviously the corresponding effect or the way our cones and our brain receive the effect isn't linear at all. Definitely um, a big clump of very similar looking green colors. Okay, but in this color ramp, the rectangles also have an uh, even distribution in hue, but they look to be evenly distributed. This is a perceptually uh, uniform color ramp. Um, notice, too, that this peak in the luminance, this teal blue, has been evened out. And now we have a very consistent graduation from green to blue and an even stepping down in um, luminance. Okay, the final problem relates to the human temptation to just use color for the sake of using color. It's not being used for a solid reason that supports the display of the data. So this is the same plot that we looked at when we were celebrating gray. It's population growth from 2000 to 2010 for the states in the US. This time though, the states, states aren't colored to encode a new value like region. They're just given their own color driven by the continuous growth value when sorted from high to low. This creates a rainbow effect when we look at it all together, which is kind of catchy, but doesn't offer any new insight into the data. Um, Additionally, it fails to make the figure easier to read. You know, on the one hand, if you were standing in a room full of a bunch of boring posters and you had this graphic to choose from, you might walk over to it. But then when you got there and saw that there was complete lack of substance, you'd be pretty turned off. So remember Tufty's admonition about color, above all do no harm. Um, in general, it's best not to use color when color isn't needed unless it helps you get your message across. Now, getting attention is different than conveying your message. One more dig at this plot. The color isn't redundantly encoding anything, and, and I think re redundant encoding is okay, but here it's just, um, it's just bling. Um, the thing that makes it kind of um, even harder is that this large, vibrant triangle of color set against the bleak white background makes it hard to look at. It kind of vibrates and it works against us if we want people to get in there and spend time inspecting the data. Okay, one more quick example, putting a few of these rainbow defects together. The rainbow color ramp um, here is applied to a county level map it's a classic map that you've probably seen a bunch of times. It could be representing any number of things. 
Um, this one is representing the fraction of precipitation that's lost to evapotranspiration over time. And so what do we know? Like looking at this, can you say which color represents a higher or lower value of precipitation lost? You might be able to intuit it from what you know about the country, rainfall, um, temperatures, and things like that. But no, you can't know if, if green is more a higher fraction of precipitation that's lost to ET or, or less than yellow or green. Okay. Yeah, we don't, we don't pre-attentively or intuitively know. And I would argue that you should be able to... Uh, intuitively look at this map without the legend and know where the highest levels of loss of precipitation are happening. It should be obvious. Here's the actual um, legend. So white is the uh, lowest fraction of precipitation lost and the dark kind of browns are the highest. So low values of loss and high values of loss, but very unintuitive. The luminance is another problem. So not only do we, do we not have intuitive ordering of these colors, but the luminance creates this big jump in shade between light green and dark green, which creates this big visual north-south line across the Midwest. And this might be a real artifact of the numeric data, or it could be an accent driven by the color scheme. These are things you need to be very aware of and um, make sure you're making deliberate choices. Oops. Okay, these are maps of Mars that are drawn in the prism color scheme. So topography, gravity, and crustal thickness. Again, the colors don't aid in understanding. So for example, is this red area higher or lower than the blue green? You know, we could look up close if they, if they add some hill shade, which it kind of looks like they have, or it could be an artifact because we know that white reads as higher than darker colors. So for all we know, this could be an artificial um, misrepresentation. You might be able to read this, but I can't. But it should be intuitive. You shouldn't have to use the legend, except if you want to get specific values off. So a bonus issue with the rainbow color ramp is that it's indistinguishable for people with some form of color blindness, which is just kind of like yeah, an extra dig. So between 5 to 8% of males in our country are affected by some form of um, color vision deficiency. We're going to talk about that in the next set of slides. So, so what are some options? Let's look at this one here. This is a new color ramp that was um, developed. It's called Cividus. It's two color blind, sorry, color blind safe colors with a clear luminance or brightness hierarchy. I'm going to show you another one here, but notice how you would read this and see these yellow patches on the edges of whatever these are as the high points. And that's actually true. Um, here's the same. Um, oh, I was going to say that uh, Viridis is another color ramp that was invented by the same people. Um, it's, it's really um, common for people with um, color vision deficiency to use these kind of safe color ramps like Viridis and Cividus. So Cividus is the one that is just two colors. Don't confuse it with this. This is the rainbow color ramp as seen um, with a red-green uh, cover color deficiency. So Viridis and Cividus are, are two really safe ones that are good to use. So notice what parts of the images seem highest. Here you can see that it's the edges of these cells, but when you look at them here, to me anyway, these seem to be higher because they're lighter color. That's some of the, um, that false accent that I was talking about. Same here, the yellow makes these look like they're a convex um, shape. They're rounded on the top. Whereas in fact, they are a con, uh, concave shape with ridges along the edges. So, um, yeah, this has big implications. It's not necessarily going to make a big difference on the graph I might make about, you know, aspen propagation. But imagine if you're looking at something that does have some kind of 3D effect, you know, maybe you're a radiation technician or an engineer reading a scan of O-ring damage on a solid rocket motor. Like these things do have major implications. And when we when we strip out colors that are supposed to have meaning for us um, for five to eight percent of the population, that's just an extra 
issue. So again, um, I want to make sure that you keep these basic rules in mind when designing your maps and graphs to create accessible and effective images that convey your message more honestly. Thanks.